Hi guys, uh, I understand that everybody over here has got into some uh, upper echelon B school of some sort. And uh, I was also once in your position 12, no, 14 years ago. Uh, very excited to go into B school and uh, a very different sort of candidate to most candidates because I was not an engineer. So I just wanted hands on who are not engineers because I took a... Oh, oh that's, wow. a, that's a fairly that's substantial amount actually. Superb, Great. things are changing, Ronan. Yeah, okay. Um, so at that point of time, when I went in, there were barely, I think, 10 non-engineers in my batch, something like that. And I was very much the odd man out. I was also the odd man out because I was a person who had done badly in academics and repeated two years of my academic career before getting into IIM. If you're going to become a leader of an organization, it probably means you're going to have to have a mastery of several other subjects. So if you're going in for just core fin because you want to become a fin major and you don't have any HR subjects, you're probably making a mistake because at some point of time you're going to have people reporting to you and you're going to do that quote unquote HR related work. So have a breadth of exposure rather than a very narrow uh, set of exposure if you can. If you can make friends at Malabar Hills but also make friends in the Kushna Sagars of UP, you get this breadth of experience which is so much more valuable and it makes you uh, a very um, grounded person. When the job and career is going on, then this is how the entire day looks like. Don't run the career, don't run away. Log on to altuni.in. Earn more at your current job or get a new one that does. Learn from experts, work on life industry projects and get high paying job opportunities. Find the link in the description. Let's yeah, talk yeah, sure. about that first not getting through uh, to the academics. You know, what was that first moment in your life when you got that setback and your parents were like, Are, beta, kya kar you need to buckle up. Well, my, my parents luckily were never uh, um, like that because I think my father was also quite bad in academics. But um, I think it's class 7 when I failed Marathi for the first time and I decided to walk home because I was so distraught about the fact that I could fail in a subject and it was unheard of and then I realized, oh, that sort of thing happens. I mean, failures happen in life. Um, and then uh, I moved from, from Bombay to Calcutta. And Calcutta is very snobby about degrees. And they think the SSC degree, which I did at the time, was not good enough. So they made me repeat plus 10. I did math honors as my bachelor's degree. Started off with math honors. And I failed that by 10 marks. So I had to repeat uh, my bachelor's as well. Why math honors? Were you inclined towards math? Did that interest you or uh, was it something that came in because peer pressure? No, it wasn't peer pressure. I realized from my uh, SSC that studying things by rote was simply not going to happen for me. And I thought that math honors would be one of the degrees where you didn't have to study something by rote, but I was wrong. You did have to study by rote, yes. Yeah, you're right. So uh, I did very badly there. I, I want to share something here. I don't know whether you guys have done it or not because uh, I did it. Uh, it was my 10th exam, board exam. And I was literally mugging up the sums because I wanted to write uh, the perfect sums the way I was, uh, you know, uh, getting taught. But yeah, I mean, honestly, this is something when we also look back at things and in hindsight, it feels like, why did we choose uh, the things that we chose in life, right? But sometimes you just go with the flow in life, right? And then you make decisions uh, on the way that, that works for you, right? What was that point for you where you thought that, you know, maybe this is something that will work for me? I think um, as you muddle through life, there are a bunch of branching roads as you're, that's going ahead of you and you have choices. And I don't think it's really useful to think about, oh, the choices that might have been and what could have come out of that. I think if you are on a path, after having made a decision to be on a path, which should be your decision, and you should weigh out the pros and cons to do that, then you should try to commit to that as much as possible and make the most of it. A mistake that I made during my MBA was not making the most of it and thinking, oh, what could have happened if I joined a, a film school somewhere abroad? And that was a mistake. And what I should have done really is tried more to get more out of my MBA degree than I did. So in that way, uh, you guys can learn from um, what I did wrong, for sure. 
what was the kind of uh, peer group that you were mingling with at that time when you were in your college pursuing your master uh, bachelor's degree in films maybe yeah yeah i don't think that people are pegged certainly in calcutta by the amount of money that they're making which is a big departure from bombay so success over there is dependent on how many books you've read and how you know cultured you are and how many uh, plays you went to the last week which is a very different paradigm to come into and i am and kind of say hey everybody here is kind of gunning for a certain rat race and a certain placement at the end and i was completely lost in that circuit when you thought that acha theek hai now i need to get an mba degree because whatever i have been doing so far is not going to give me that that dividend or return that i have set out for uh, in life maybe doing what i am doing right now it was a complete mistake um so no it it, it at the point of time i stumbled into it in retrospect it was a great thing that happened to me i did the cat because uh, i thought i was going to get into advertising and in order to do well at advertising i thought i should go to mica uh, and having got a certain cat score which was um, allowing me entrance at other b schools as well i was advised hey you should go to the best b school that you have a cat score of because um, that will open much more opportunities and you have many more choices thereafter which uh, turned out to be the right advice if i was in advertising and i was trying to uh, make uh, things work with my extracurriculars life and the long hours that advertising demands uh, it could have been quite a different uh, um, life that i led so i am uh, happy that the person who gave me that advice gave me that advice and i would also say hey don't close any doors for yourself don't make any predetermined choices in your head as you're going in now is the time for you guys to figure out what it is that you would be interested in and for sure there will be some people who will be very very certain that they are going to get to this end goal and then you should take those classes so i was one of the few people who audited some classes without uh, actually having it on their academic record which is quite mind opening i uh, knew a lot about marketing so i did a lot i i audited a lot of finance courses and game theory courses and these subjects that i would never have scored well at but uh, it opened my eyes to things that i otherwise would not have known and i advise you as well if you're going to become a leader of an organization it probably means you're going to have to have a mastery of several other subjects so if you're going in for just core fin because you want to become a fin major and you don't have any hr subjects you're probably making a mistake because at some point of time you're going to have people reporting to you and you're going to do that quote and quote hr related work so have a breadth of exposure rather than a very narrow uh, set of exposure if you can right uh, you mentioned that uh, you know extracurriculars was something that was driving you right but tell us a little bit about your experience in uh, i'm indore when you actually went in there uh, did you become good at academics or were you about to flunk as well there because you were focusing too much on extracurriculars i actually tried not to focus on extracurriculars but i i think i could have done i could have concentrated more academically um i spent a lot of time quite morose in my room uh, uh watching tv shows which was a waste of time in retrospect i don't know why i did that i, I think you should be out there making friends i think if you are definitely focus on your academics uh of there there are um easier ways to do well academically than to study everything yourself asking people the things that you're weak at is the way out and being very upfront about the fact that you know this is my weak spot can you help me which is not something that when you go in you're trying to prove myself prove yourself and you're you're not going to take help from anyone forget that abandon that immediately um i would also say there are some institutes uh, which are much more cutthroat than others and uh, it's people trying to trip other people up don't do that that doesn't help people out in the long run and in the long run the most valuable thing and you've probably heard this before that's going to come out of your mba aided degree is your friends and if you are the person who's tripping other people up you're not going to have those long term friendships so uh definitely don't do that and also understand this if i am tripping somebody else up on my way to academic success let's say that person he or she is not going to do as well chances are you didn't do your full potential of performance if you help them and they help you both of you are likely to get better and you are not competing with the small set of people who are in your institute for what you assume to be the five coveted jobs that come on campus you're actually in a much bigger world outside thereafter 
competing for jobs. And if you gain more inside the institute, you're better positioned to gain those other jobs outside than those few jobs that you tried to, you know, not uh, help somebody else out about or, or try to get there ahead of somebody else. You know, let's let's talk a little bit about. Uh, I know for a fact that you started something in uh, I am Indore uh, while you were there, and you were active <laughs> member of it, and 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 then you made sense to a lot of people about you know the the requirement of that particular bit. Uh, what was that? What was that like? So there was a festival that was there uh, at I am Indore to start with. Um, and then uh, that was uh, we, we decided to branch that off into the B School Festival and have another cultural festival. Uh, uh, so there were going to be two separate festivals in I am Indore, and I started the cultural festival. Me and two other people started the cultural festival uh, in I am Indore, and um, I think it was ambitious um, because the campus of Indore is very far removed from where the sponsors are. And then you're also trying to get sponsors for the B-School event, also trying to get sponsors for this, and you're trying to delineate both of the two. Uh, you, we, we were also trying to get non-MBA students for the Cultural Fest as well. Uh, and we laid this very large promise to the campus, uh, presenting to the campus, saying that we were going to deck up the campus in a very different way. Uh, and Mridang does continue to this day, I think. Uh, and long, long ago in the past, that's something that I did, yeah. Sometimes what happens, uh, you know, Ronan, and correct me if I'm wrong, right? Uh, if you're not bringing uh, money, you're not doing enough, is the kind of, uh, you know, approach that we have in life. I mean, people say, what do you do with arts and right? Uh, so, what is your take on that? I have a lot of views on that, and I, I mean, I, that's going to take a long time to get into. But I would twist that to say, if you're not bringing value, then perhaps you're not doing enough. And you can definitely bring value in the uh, social sphere. And you can bring value by um, creating great work that's going to touch the lives of people. And eventually, we are all emotive human beings. And if you have an outlet to express that emotion, or somebody else is able to, to look at that emotion, and art for sure has toppled regimes and, and made great changes, but even on a smaller scale, uh, to bring a happiness and joy to some, somebody, or even to, to allow somebody to feel anger through a certain other form of art is something of value. Uh, so I would view the arts in that way. But not only that, um, that is our culture and our legacy. A long time later when you know, the, the current archaeological remains uh, of, of whatever we have over here, you're not going to see uh, the, the bank balances on people's checkbooks from the Roman era, you're going to see their artworks. So that's the long-standing legacies that you'd be leaving. While you were at uh, I Am Indoor, were you doing certain things that you were passionate about? Were you making films? Were you making art? Were you making uh, you know, music? Were you uh, producing theatre? Was that happening side by side? That was happening less for me. I did start, so I was teaching a series of musical instruments to other people on campus. And I was uh, teaching theater to a limited extent, but I very quickly needed to focus on my academics because I was slipping compared to the engineers who were absolutely massacring me in, in, in college. I didn't do that, that as much there, but uh, I made up for it after entering corporate life and, and went on a rampage in the arts thereafter. Let's, let's talk about the corporate life now. You know, uh, the first company that you joined and you were staying with that company for uh, the next 10, 12 years, which you are continuing with right now as well. How did Mahindra happen to you? Where, uh, you know, when, when they came on campus, were you targeting them saying that, you know, this is the company that I want to be in? And why was that choice made? During my summers, I didn't make a lot of interviews that I thought uh, uh, should have happened. Um, and uh, Mahindra came on campus and they had this role open for a, a, a position in their filmmaking company which is called Mumbai Mantra, which has since shut. So I was a shoe in for that role, and I, I got that pretty easily. I don't think I make a good first impression in interviews. I sound very self-aggrandizing, and, and people think, hey, this guy's a fake. Uh, and, and they don't realize that I'm actually just an earnest person trying to, to make the best of, of what I have. So I did my internship with them, and I did well in the internship. And as a result of doing well in the internship, they came back and said, you know what, we think that you're a, not a well-rounded person, and, and what you do have missing is the rural area. Little did I know they were trying to, trying to pitch a job to me. Uh, so it was not really an interview in that case. It was them trying to convince me to join a particular role uh, in Mahindra. Um, after that, my, uh, one of the reasons I've stuck around in Mahindra is because 
they understand me and allow me to be the oddball that I am, I get away with a lot of um, speaking my mind to senior leaders uh, that I'm not sure that other organizations would easily allow. I'm respectful, of course, but um, I, I'm also, uh, when somebody is wrong, I will call it out, and, and that's not necessarily a nice thing to do when there are other people around. And luckily, the Mahindra leaders have enough, um, you know, um, self-respect, or I would say, they, ha they, they don't have uh, inflated egos, and that doesn't trouble them as much as it might have in all other organizations. So allowing me that leeway is something that Mahindra did time and time again, so I grew into the comfort of Mahindra as Mahindra kind of absorbed the, the, the thorn that was me. Uh, let, let's talk about uh, that journey that you just mentioned that you were uh, going to sell tractors, right? Yes, that's right. Is that so? Yeah. Did you also have that panchayat moment in you? Have you seen the show? That's, that's Will. <laughs> okay. Why I uh, did that reference is because that guy, that poor fellow is also trying to crack cat and do his MBA and get a better life, right? Your, in your case, that was different. You did crack cat, you did your MBA, uh, you had that, uh, you know, life there where people think that after this, I'm going to go to an AC office and, you know, administer people and doing things. That was not the case with you. You decided that you want to go to a rural uh, place and sell tractors. What was that experience like? If you are from an urban setup, chances are good that you're going to meet people on campus who are not from an urban setup and their view on life is going to be entirely different from your view on life and you should make friends with them rather than uh, occupy your own clique, uh, you're definitely going to expand your horizons as a result. I also realized that there was this big chunk of India that was missing from uh, uh, who I was and, and what I knew and I didn't have a firm understanding of that aspect. My vernacular is weak even today but the ability to bond with people is far beyond language. I was going to uh, villages, some of the villages were so poor in their, uh, I, I don't think, when we sit over here and we read about how poor villages, it really strikes home. You do come across people who are digging in rat nests for rice so that they can wash the rice and eat the rice. That's how poor Indian villages can get. If you had told me that before I had experienced it for myself, I simply wouldn't have believed uh, that that, was, that could have been a reality. Um, if you can make a difference there, and if you can bond there, if you can you know, speak at, if you can, if you can make friends at Malabar Hills, but also make friends in the Kushna Sagars of UP, you get this breadth of experience which is so much more valuable, and it makes you uh, a very um, grounded person, and our wants, which our wants can be very, you know, I want a, a fancy car and I want to live in a certain space. And then you realize here, these people who may not have that much. So the people I was selling tractors to, these were people who were bullock farmers and they were moving from bullock farmers to tractors for the first time. And they were very apprehensive about what a tractor was. So uh, when you see that jump that they are getting in, in their lifestyle, and a gentleman thanked me, he said that, you know, because of this tractor that you sold me, my lifespan is probably going to be many, many years more because otherwise I'd spend eight hours behind a bullock. I'm spending one hour a tractor. Maybe my son can go to college. And that's true for um, some 50,000 families that I might have sold a tractor to. Maybe not all of them. Some, some of them are rich farmers who bought a tractor. But um, that is a very grounding experience that will... Um, there's something much... There's something that can uh, people lead, reach behind the glamour behind an MBA and the jobs that might be jet-setting and glamorous. And uh, there's a carrot that dangles uh, and you want to go and, and follow that life. And recently there's been a lot of people who have been retiring from Mahindra. Uh, these are people who are clothed in great power and then they suddenly don't know after they've retired how to book a flight ticket because a flight tickets have always been booked for them. So don't get into that position where you're so uh, uh, removed from what is essential and, and down to earth that you're not able to connect with every sort of person. Superb. Lovely advice. Uh, I think Ronan and uh, we all need to, you know, put our feet in the ground and understand that the realities that we live every day might not be the entire reality in front of our eyes, right? And these kind of experiences do, uh, you know, give us that check. But what exactly was your role there? I mean, uh, as somebody who was interested uh, forever in your life, and as you mentioned that you wear the oddball out, right? 
what was the uh, responsibility given to you and how good or bad were you doing while you were selling these tractors? I thought I was doing very badly for a very long time. Um, it was my responsibility to sell this tractor called Yuvraj 215. Uh, it, it was on my KRA, but selling this particular tractor was not on anybody else's KRA. Other people would have, uh, you know, a Maharashtra sales target, which was a lot of other tractors. The tractor was also more difficult to sell than other tractors because uh, a dealer margin would be uh, 5,000 rupees on this tractor and 50,000 rupees on a larger tractor, which was easier to sell because people knew what it was about. I was really trying to pull a very large roll by, load by myself and uh, not realizing why it was not happening. Um, ultimately, I spent, like, for, by, by the time the fourth year I was doing that job, I was making around 800 phone calls a month to dealers, trying to say, hey, last month I spoke to you, you said that this would happen, but don't you know social change? And I was selling that tractor through Chum. I was definitely not selling that tractor through anything else. Making friendships uh, and, and trying to get that out there. After I left that role, uh, the volumes of that tractor fell from, I never hit my target. My target was 20,000, I, I only got to 15,000, but the volume of the tractor fell thereafter. And then I realized that I was doing a good job. Uh, but all through that time, I didn't think that I was doing any good. And thereafter, I got, I got handpicked into and moved on to other things because that experience was so valuable, not only to Mahindra, but through a lot of social organizations that I had to uh, coach through their difficult times as well. You said that you were handpicked from there and uh you must have been landed in something else that Mahindra was doing. What did they decide that, uh, you know, you will be a fit for right now uh, with the scheme of things? And did you also say that, uh, 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 no, I never told them that. I did do that on the side. Um, um, I, 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 now I never, they know it. Uh, oh, absolutely. That, <laughs> I, I, I don't think they object to that at all. And good employers will not object to you following your dreams, whether your dreams are in your office or whether your dreams are outside your office. So uh, you should always seek that out. And if they're not giving that to you, there's something wrong. Um, they, the, the next thing after tractors is they put me in something called innovation cell. And the innovation cell was this IDEO-like lab. I don't know if anybody's heard of the company IDEO, design thinking, if these, are these ringing any bells? So a learning for me, back when I was perhaps in college, design thinking wasn't the thing. And the way that the world is moving, you are going to experience a technology, probably be in charge of a technology that isn't the thing when you are studying. Instead of thinking, hey, I never applied anything in my engineering degree that is useful now, uh, think about the ways that you learned how to think in your engineering degree and whether that can be brought forward later, uh, getting to the fundamentals of things. And whether it's engineering or whether it's filmmaking, it's, it's all the same. I was put in charge of making um, new products or services for the auto, farm equipment, and the agricultural sector, uh, representing the consumer vertical. So what I was mostly doing is you know, going out and getting insights from people and trying to convert that into uh, products and services. Many pieces of marketing, I think there's some 12 or 15 pieces of marketing that they are right now, very few marketing courses uh, say that, hey, product is very much your domain. So as the marketer, you are responsible for making sure that that product that the company is creating is something that the consumer wants. And that was uh, something that I was doing. It was very exciting because I was uh, reviewing MIT graduates having no engineering training myself, but getting into the, the, the brass roots of, of how a cotton picker might work, for example. What were some of the challenges that you faced during this time? You know, you, you mentioned that uh, a lot of, lot of things that you were doing was for the first time that you were doing, right? And, uh, you know, these, uh, as you mentioned, the P's, they have become 12, 15, I don't know. They grow faster than the amoebas, I think. So, uh, you know, how do you, how do you cope with that? The changing patterns in, in even, say, for example, marketing or marketing communications. How do you deal with that? And what sort of challenges were you facing at that time? I would say this, you are going to be learning how to learn fast. And that's definitely a core skill. Uh, something that they don't teach you is to uh, rely on other people who can probably know their subject matter better than you and learn, gain from them. But that's definitely a skill that you should pick up. They will be people from different backgrounds who will be better at certain subjects than you and uh, your ability to gain knowledge from A, them academically, and B, their experiences will, will broaden you. I learned to trust other people 
to give them responsibility and a target to deliver and, and, and a motivation for other people because I was not the best engineer out there. I wasn't an engineer at all. Yet, I had to get into something quite hardcore. Uh, later on, I realized, so the, my, my next job was handling the corporate brand of Mahindra and uh, much of that was dealing with the social media space and we were churning out a great deal of content with my mass communication degree helped again. If you don't trust the editor, if you don't give the editor empowerment to make the right choices, or if you don't trust the person who is creating the social media posts, and you're looking over their shoulder, and somebody else is looking over your shoulder, and somebody else is looking over their shoulder, you're not going to respond fast enough to at least social media posts for sure. So there is a tendency to control, especially when you're getting more and more senior. I think to relinquish that control and trust people is very important and to give them guidance on what the right way is. You're not going to be 100% correct in every decision that you make in any case. But you want to optimize the right decisions to an 80%. And let's just take the example of social media, which, which it's fairly easy to understand. If I review at the end of the week, hey, these are the social media posts that went out and these are the two or three things that I think we could have done better, that allows the person to learn and therefore make those choices correctly themselves, as opposed to before the social media post goes out, I always say, hey, you know this, hey, you know that, and they're going to tend to, okay, let me check with Ronan before I'm gonna put that social media post out, because I'm sure he's gonna have a better idea, and their thinking process is therefore going to switch off, and you're also going to be less nimble as a result, and you're the, suddenly this bottleneck to all the decisions that are being made. That is going to be very important when you're doing your exercises together as teams, you're going to be five people with very different strengths. And some people are going to be weak among you and some people are going to be stronger among you. And it's important to give everybody, whether they're strong or weak, something that they can reach up to achieve that is going to be useful for them. And that leadership lesson is something that they don't usually like instruct you towards, uh, but will be very helpful. And if it will create more free time, assuming you are the smartest person in that group, it will create so much more free time for you to uh, delve yourself into the things that are important to you. Superb. Lovely advice, uh, Ronan. Because, uh, uh, you know, we all deal with uh, this, this whole uh, problem that we all have in a lot of corporates and that is micromanaging, right? Uh, and, and we need to get beyond that in order to scale our own organizations. Many parts of art, let's take literature as an easy example, uh, is about emotions, is about putting your feet, uh, your, yourself into somebody else's feet, is to try to experience things from their, their worldview. That definitely builds empathy. And I am for sure not the smartest person. I am probably not the most hardworking person in, in the teams that I'm in. But I have, I bring oodles of empathy to the table. And as you get more and more senior, as you go to the upper echelons, you'll realize that many people up there are sociopaths. They, they really don't have any empathy at all. There will be people um, who go through bad placements. It might be you, in which case you should reach out for, for, for help but, uh, uh, and, and speak about the problems that you have with somebody else. But it's very, it's with 100% certainty, one of your friends, your very close friends, is not going to get a placement in the first day, second day, third day, and they're going to be very unhappy and probably uh, depression in the clinical sense of the word is going to hit and if you can be there for them then that's going to take you a long way further and probably ready you for when in the workplace those ups and downs are going to come and, and, and difficult conversations are going to come your way you will know what to do about it and you'll allow um, people to lean on your shoulders at those critical times you must be thinking another pre-roll wait let me just skip it with all theory, there are some boring things which you can avoid, like the long wait for promotions or increments, or the numerous interviews before you land your dream job. At all theory, we make sure that you're future ready and skilled to be in the top 0.5% class. Click on the link in the description now.